What's up guys? Hey, it's Clint Coons here. And in the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about the number one mistake that I see people make who engage in rental arbitrage. And what really brought this to the forefront, why I wanted to cut this video and get it out to you right away is because what's been going on with this particular client is could spell the same doom for you that she's facing right now with her overall business. So what actually happened and why did I want to get this video out? Well, here's what she did. She has set up an entity right here. This is a corporation. So she set up this corporation and she went out there and she entered into some lease agreements with various owners of, of properties all through this one entity, just like you would normally do, right? You enter into a lease here. Let's say we lock this one up for 4K, this one's for 3K and this one's for $2,000. So this corporation is leasing these properties. Now, her business is in turn leasing these properties back out, some of them on a short term rental basis, of course, to, to various tenants. And so she's bringing in, you know, $1,000 a week here, maybe $4,000 a month there too, whatever. It, the numbers do not matter. But the fact of the matter is this income's coming into the business. Okay. So what she did is she has a property management agreement in place with this uh, property right here. She contracted with them. They were going to do some painting because this is a fourplex. So there's four units here. Painter came in, they did all the painting without running the numbers by her. And then they hit her with a bill for $35,000. So they said, you owe us $35,000 to come in and paint these four units. Now, obviously, had they run this by her ahead of time, she would have said, no, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to pay $35,000 which equates to about $9,000 per unit to have these things painted out. But she wasn't given that option. She gave that authority over to the property manager. Uh, and so they come in now and they're coming after her and sent her company to collections. Now, here's another problem with this deal that you need to be aware of. And I'm going to tell you how to solve this. Just hold on. I'm going to get to how you fix this problem. The other problem is that when she signed the agreement, so this is something you have to remember, whenever you're signing agreements, when you have a business entity, never just put your name on there by itself. So when I looked at the agreement that she signed, she had all these initials for her, her uh, business, her ink, and she would initial like this on behalf of the ink and the contract was between her and the, the corporation. And then you got down to the very last line where it says sign here, right? Now, when she signed on behalf of her company, so let's say she put Jane Doe, boom, just like that. Now, what is the problem with that? Well, the fact is, is that now when you sign that agreement with this person over here on this property, not only did you obligate your company because the contract was between property owner and her ink, but when you sign your name like this, just like this, you also obligate yourself personally. See, what you want to do is you want to put a comma president in this case, because it is a corporation, if she's the president, or if you're an LLC, you want to put manager. So now this person right here can send this company to collections and they can send her personally collections because she didn't put this limiter on there. She's on the hook individually now for this $35,000. So here's the problem and it's the mistake that I see a lot of people make who are engaging in arbitrage or sandwich lease option agreements. This is what you're doing that you need to watch out for and you should correct. So by entering into this transaction now, first off, you're never going to make this mistake. We fixed that for you. You're, you've learned how to sign it. But going at it where you're using one business entity to enter into all these leases. You see, the question that, that was posed is, what do I do? Do I pay this? How do I stop the collections from coming after me? Well, there's not a really a lot that she can do right now because she has all this income coming in from these various uh, people she's renting to. So let's say she's making uh, $15,000 a month. What that creditor is going to do is they're going to move in, get a judgment against the company, come in and garnish this bank account and grab all that cash. So this wouldn't have happened if we had used a different strategy. Now, what does that strategy look like? And it's the one I've been telling you I'm going to show you. Well, when you're getting involved in this type of stuff, you got to look at the type of leases that you're engaging in, the types of properties and what that liability might look like. So you may want to limit your overall liability exposure by possibly maybe running that same entity down here. If she was going to run an ink as follows, 
And then for each of those lease agreements, you start stacking LLCs here. So you create separate LLCs like this that are owned 100% by this corporation. So now when I got this deal right here, I have agreement between the LLC and this property owner right there. I got a second one over here and I have a deal like this. And the third one is like this. Okay, now assuming you sign properly. So now we got an LLC here and remember, depending on your operating agreement, you're either gonna sign as a member, manager, or you could possibly even sign as an officer of that if you know how to set up your LLC the right way. So now, in that case, had she structured it in this manner, then that liability, that collection company would be coming to this LLC. Because obviously what I wanted to say to this client was, hey, don't worry about it. Shut your corporation down, walk away from that. The agreement was between the corp and that, that individual there, that company there. But the problem is there's many other leases involved. In fact, I think there were 16 other leases involved in this scenario where they're bringing in money. So if you try to walk away from one, it's going to collapse everything else for you. But if you'd use a little, some, some LLCs in this manner to break up your liability, and maybe you want to group a few. So maybe you put three here, three here, three here, something like that. That's up to you. But the point of the, is that I'm making is that now you could say, tactically, this no longer makes sense for me. I'm going to get rid of this entity here. I'll keep these all in place. Let that one just die, dissolve it out, bankrupt it, whatever, to make that judgment go away. Now, you may be wondering about this. What about the flip side of that transaction? Who are we leasing out to? Which entity here is actually engaging the tenants? Well, the leases here, those entities that I created, that's the one that would be dealing with the tenants on the other side. So the people that you're, you're running the money out to, they're going to be paying the limited liability companies as follows. But then all of that income is going to flow down to your corporation. In her case, this was a, a, a C Corp. Uh, the, the money would flow into the corporation because those LLCs are passed through entities. They're disregarded for tax purposes. So if you're thinking about engaging in uh, sandwich lease option deals where you don't own the property, you're leasing from somebody and you're subleasing it back out, or you're doing a, a rental arbitrage strategy, maybe it's short-term rental arbitrage, then uh, what you might want to consider is that using your main parent company, limit that liability by having that main parent company own some other limited liability companies. I mean, in this case here, it's a $35,000 error. Had you set up a few extra LLCs and you, you balance that out, you would have been money ahead with that type of protection. Hey guys, if you like this strategy and you wanna learn more about it, click on the link below in the show notes and set up a strategy session with someone in our firm. And we'll help you set up a structure like this and analyze it for you. All right, everyone, take care.